So what strikes you as different about this conference than years past? Well, certainly we're in person, which I think um, both vendors and customers were really excited about. I think there's a really strong interest in security. Um, it's something I've talked about for a while. Even if we go into a, a difficult macro background, mm. security is still going to be a, a top priority for boards and a top budgeted item uh, to keep companies safe. So it's encouraging. Obviously, we're in that industry, but we're also focused on helping customers and consolidate their spend. And I think that's been a big focus. How do you consolidate spend in an area like security? Now, there have been conflicting reports on the actual state of the cyber threat landscape. Mm -hmm. For example, cyber um, ransomware attacks. Are yep. they up or are they down? <laughs> well, some of the dollar amounts are down, and I think there's uh, two reasons for that. You've seen some movement in Bitcoin, right, as, mm -hmm. it's, as it's crashed. And uh, when you calculate all this, it's down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the other piece is um, when you think about Ukraine and Russia and some of the, the, the cyber crime, e-crime groups, they used to coordinate. Now, there's not a lot of coordination between the groups, and some of the groups have actually splintered and, and, uh, and fractured off. So um, overall, it's still a really robust e-crime market. Ransomware is uh, one of the top uh, threats of the day, and uh, people are still paying big dollars for it. President Biden had warned about these retaliatory potential cyber attacks from Russia, but it doesn't seem like that has happened yet, has it? Well, are we missing something? Well, I think what's important to realize is that Russia continually has access to lots of systems around the globe. Mm -hmm. They're a very capable um, cyber adversary. But it hasn't and happened yet, right? I mean, it hasn't been as bad as certainly the president. Well, I, you know, and I think it, that's what I'm trying to say. They have access in lots of places. And once you start to destroy things, then your access tends to get figured out, right? Mm. And what people have to realize is that in, in cyber war, it's a one-time use weapon. If, if something that's destructive is used, you can use it one time. The other piece that's interesting, and uh, it's a broader question, is what a cyber attack, a destructive one now, constitute an act of war? And I think just given the, the changing geopolitical landscapes, it's unclear. There have also been criticisms about Biden's approach to cybersecurity, you know, pushing more responsibility on private companies. Yeah. Kirsten Todd of CISA was also at RSA. Yeah. She was here on the show. Take a listen to what she had to say. Okay. When we're talking about ransomware, I think the challenge with this issue is that we've created kind of a perverse structure. We in the United States have actually created a market, a very thriving, strong market in ransomware. We're in, we now have companies that charge, you know, six figures to go on retainer, to negotiate ransom, to get information about malicious actors. What do you make of that? Did we create our own problems? <laughs> I don't know that we created our own problems. Obviously, uh, when you look at the amount of money that can be, be uh, gained from encrypting a, a system. I think the bad guys have figured out that if you can make $300 on one system, you, you can make a lot more by taking out an entire company. And it's just a function of the complexity of the technology environment and the fact that from a regulatory or maybe from a legal framework perspective, it's very difficult to bring these threat actors uh, to justice because they're all over the place and a lot of times you can't get to them. So there's big dollars to be made in those areas. Speaking of dollars, CrowdStrike share price has dropped significantly mm -hmm. with the rest of the market. What should investors uh, be looking for over the, over the next six months? And what do you have to say to, to folks who are maybe skeptical? Well, I mean, I can't forecast the market, but when you look at our Q1 earnings and what we were able to, to, uh, to display, um, and we talked about that last week, you look at the growth rate, 61% annual recurring revenue, almost $2 billion in annual recurring revenue. And that's combined an incredible growth rate at scale with cash flow generation, which is what investors are looking for. 32% free cash flow generation, 157.5 million for the quarter. We think that's the right recipe and that's what we're focused on, executing and keeping our customers safe. There are so many more cybersecurity companies at this year's RSA than there were even last year because so many new companies have been funded. Are they all going to survive? Are, are you worried about the, the future of some of these companies? Well, I, I, I think security is a complicated landscape and not every company, uh, even ours, can handle everything in the security landscape mm. in terms of um, specific areas. That being said, a lot of companies at RSA are features. Right, they're not true companies or true platform companies, and a lot of them won't be public. And when we think about what's happening today, the public markets are locked up, so you have a lot of private companies with high valuations that don't really have an exit at this point. And when you think about the public market valuations going down, that's going to bleed off into the private markets. Uh, we've seen layoffs at some of these companies, and in fact, we think it's going to be an opportunity for better hiring because 
of uh, just this lockup in the IPO market. And the second area is in the M&A front, we think there's going to be some great opportunities out there in the future.